This has definitely been one of the strangest winters I can remember. Between the crazy snowstorms, the warm weather, and the rain, it's definitely not a typical Canadian winter. Finally, we've had a few consistently cold nights, and today we're gonna check out this small little back lake uh, that I think will be good for ice camping tonight and ice fishing. It's actually been so warm that my buddy Kurt and I took his boat out of storage and launched it in the lake last week. And just for reference, on the exact same day last year, we were ice fishing in that spot. Let's go buddy, Chester. We have about a 20 minute drive to get to the lake and an unknown amount of time to walk in. Let's get going. Chester, watch out, bud. Oh my God, it's gonna be tight in here. Got a change of plans here. We ran into our buddy Norm and he's gonna, he's offered to give us a lift to the lake in his, what do you call this? Is this side by side? Uh, Kubota. Kubota. That's Unload it. Unload and load it, eh? Yeah. Well, thanks, Norm. You saved me probably two hours of, <laughs> of walking and hard labor. This lake's actually been frozen for quite a while. Uh, it's just that with all the snow, rain, and the warm weather, there was just like a foot of slush on here and you couldn't walk. Look up, buddy. about a foot, a foot of ice. There we go. Chester. Just Chester, stop. What did that tiger do to you, buddy? This is why we can't have nice things, bud. This is why. Since the plan tonight is to eat fish for dinner, before we do any more setup, I'm gonna get a line in the water just to maximize our chance at catching something. In this lake, I believe there is perch and maybe rainbow trout. <laughs> We're gonna aim for perch, and if we catch a trout, it's a bonus. It's a small tungsten jig, just tipped with some worm. Hopefully it gets the job done.
Got you. Yo. Easy, easy, easy. <laughs> He's in paradise, he loves it. Chester. <laughs> He's having a great time. Finally, just about fully set up. We got most of, most of everything in the tent now. We just have to make the bed. Similar to outside, I'm using a tungsten jig, but this one's just gonna have a uh, bit of a pink rubber worm on it. I also brought my sonar with me to help, uh, to help the cause. You can see that's that line there going up and down. That's my jig. I don't know why the sonar is having a tough time reading the bottom here, but it's uh, it's about six feet deep. What are you doing? Just chill. Just chill. Try catching a fish with this on your lap. <laughs> you don't want fish for dinner? Is that what you're telling me? Chester. Chester. <laughs> Stop. You're not helping, buddy. I was really hoping that the fish would just be here. And I wouldn't have to work too hard to, to catch them, but about 50 minutes into fishing, we've seen one single fish on the sonar, one mark. It did not bite. So I'm thinking we're gonna have to do a little bit of hole hopping, get outside the tent and, uh, and search for these fish. We just drilled here. Oh, there we go, got one, we got a fish. Chester, watch out, watch out. Hey, <laughs> first fish of the year. Not a bad little perch. We'll need a few more than one if we're gonna eat perch for dinner, but. What is that, buddy? What is that? That's a nice stick, bud. Back in the hut now, it's, it's really tough to film out there. It's getting quite cold. I think we're expecting minus 15 Celsius tonight. But we got, we got one fish on the board. It's certainly not enough for dinner. I figure we at least get the bare minimum need like three more. It's weird, like these fish are so finicky. I've never seen a perch that didn't like a worm. <laughs> Just realizing that it probably would have been a smart decision to bring both cots. I don't know how sleeping with this guy. <laughs> on this cot with me is gonna be, but I'm sure we'll make it work. I realize this might look a little, might be a little silly to flay one perch, but I really was hoping for more. Um, at the end of the day, I'm not gonna let this fish go to waste. So we'll still make one perch taco. The problem with the, with the perch is you don't get much meat off of each one. That's why typically you'd, you'd keep like a dozen or so. Yeah, we'll get a couple tacos off out of this. <laughs> All right, well, there you have it. Just enough <laughs> for one. One tiny taco. So for once, I actually planned a backup just in case the fishing was slow. Um, I brought mac and cheese. Well, that water's boiling, I'm just gonna coat my two baby fillets in panko. Oil is frozen. I think that's oil. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I mean, that's not even enough for one real taco. We got some chipotle and adobo sauce. 
We got some mayonnaise. It's a good combination. We just had a, we just missed a bite. There's still a chance for more fish. Oh, he's still there, he's still there. Mister, wait, Chester, move here, Chester. Here, heel, heel. We just missed a bite. Oh, Chester. We just missed one. A little bit of lime. A little bit of cheese. It's really good. That's really good. If only we had like 10 more of these. It'd be really fun if we caught a fish while we're, if we caught a perch while we're eating perch. It would have been a lot better if I had used my avocado, my cabbage, and just caught more perch. 8 out of 10 meal, 2 out of 10 fishing. Can't wait. Go. Good boy. You want to go pee? So tonight to heat the tent, I'm using a Mr. Heater buddy heater. I have that hooked up to a 20 pound tank outside and that should run no problem all night. I also have this fan and that's really just for circulating the heat. See, it's substantially warmer in here. For my American friends, it's 53 and 20 outside. And lastly, I have a carbon monoxide detector. This is key. This thing is supposed to be safe. It has a low oxygen shutoff, but uh, it's better safe than sorry. I keep this right beside my head when I'm sleeping. So if anything were to go wrong, um, we, we'd know right away and, uh, well, we can get out of here. Okay. So you want 90% of the space, eh? <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see if anyone gets any sleep tonight. It's going to be a tight fit on this cot. We are up to, uh, 15 degrees inside Celsius and minus nine outside, so it is getting colder. We still got two rods in the water. I'm not overly confident that we're gonna catch anything uh, overnight, but if we do, I'll let you guys know. All right, we'll see you guys in the morning. Good night. Chester, how'd you sleep? I probably got, I got a little bit of sleep. I didn't sleep too well, but got a, got a few hours anyways. 7.30? 7.30, minus 13 outside and 13 degrees inside. My fan died and I noticed that we lost a couple degrees as soon as that happened. Sun's just rising. I gotta let this guy out for a pee and we gotta make some coffee. <laughs> He's gotta go so far to go pee. Go. <laughs> Such a weirdo. Just <laughs> get down. <laughs> okay.
Still being finicky. We're seeing lots of fish on the sonar just go try and live bait. I'm back to artificial now. And it looks like they're right on it and nothing happens. They they just eventually leave. And I guess that's why they call it fishing not catching. Well our sonar battery is officially dead. We didn't catch any more fish. And I think it's just about time we start to gather our things together and pack on up. Do you guys remember this tiger that, that Chester was playing with at the beginning of the video? Camp's all loaded up on the slide. Uh, and it's just about time for us to start our torturous walk back to the car. Hope you enjoyed this one. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one. One more time. You're saving the day. This guy's a legend.